Turn with us to Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1, verse 40. I mentioned this fellow that we're about to hear about tonight a couple of weeks ago, if I remember correctly. But I just kind of felt impressed that, well, I didn't kind of, I, I did. I felt impressed that I needed to go to this and look at this again. We're living in a world that needs motivation. Amen. We're getting to the point where we need motivation more than we can put into words. As a Tennessee volunteer fan, I'm finding it hard to find motivation. I heard today the Titans lost. Finding it hard to find motivation. And then I heard that Jesus Christ was high and lifted up sitting at the right hand of God the Father and I found my motivation see I learned something the areas of entertainment will let you down their motivation comes and goes like waves but thank God the Lord is constant and sure somebody say amen anybody say amen all of you say amen hallelujah I said the Lord is constant and sure and I'm glad for that tonight. Amen and amen. Mark chapter 1 at verse 40. If you got it, say amen. If you ain't got it, look up above me there. Now a leper came to Jesus, imploring him, kneeling down to him, and saying to him, If you are willing, you can make me clean. That's not a challenge. That's an understanding. Come on. I know people that have prayed for healing and didn't get it, quote unquote. And walked away disheartened and sad. But this man said, if you're willing, you can make me clean. Verse 41. Then Jesus moved with compassion stretched out his hand and touched him. Remember that. And said to him, I am willing. Be cleansed. And as soon as he had spoken, immediately. When? How quick is immediately? Right then, right there, instantly. Immediately, the leprosy left him. And he was cleansed simple question what do you need what do you need what do we need what is it that our family needs what is it that our community needs what is it we need to come to Jesus if we know what our need is father help me tonight God to speak the word that you've given to me help me God Lord to declare father God what it is that you want shared with this congregation and with these father that are watching God tonight by live stream and Facebook and YouTube Help us, God, Lord, as this delayed broadcast goes out, Father God. I've seen upwards of 300-plus people who have watched, oh, God, Lord, and I thank you for that. I thank you, God, that the Word is reaching more people, God, Lord, beyond the walls of our building. But I pray, God, Lord, I ask you simply let your touch be felt inside these walls and then let it go forth like a just rippling effect, God, of a stone thrown in the water. And I pray, God, Lord, let others feel that touch as well. Touch us tonight, God, Lord, as we seek you for what we have need of. In Christ's name we pray and everybody said amen, amen and amen and amen. To let you know, I meant to mention this this morning. I made contact with the sheriff's department to find out about the young man who was arrested here Saturday a week ago. He's currently in lockup. He has violated parole. He's probably not getting out. With that said, his trial regarding our situation comes up this week on the 10th. I believe the 10th or the 12th? The 12th. I believe it is at 1 o'clock. Seemed like they told me it was a Thursday, and that's the 12th. So pray. Pray for this young man. His last name is Price. Pray for Mr. Price that God will do in his life what needs to be done. And I'm still trying to find out how I can get into his hands the things that we have available, but unfortunately, where he's going, he may not be able to use them. They don't exactly, you know, honor 
food cards. I have those. I don't know if you know this or not. Last week, our visitors from Florida, sister walked up and she said, here, I have three cards, one for $25, the other one for $25, the other one, I think she said $10. Would you please give them to him? And until I read her little book talking about the blessings in her life, I didn't understand. But God used her to open up a truck stop restaurant that had closed down. She spent three long months cleaning it up. I can only imagine a truck stop restaurant needing cleaning that took three months. But she said when it opened, it was clean. It passed the health inspector's requirements. And she began to do a ministry for the next five years of feeding people there, not just truckers, but anybody, everybody. Sometimes she took care of people who could not pay. And she took care of people that the Lord provided. And then tremendous ministry, someone had brought a piano in there and left it. And she would sit down and begin to play. And she didn't play the top 40 or, you know, for rock or pop or country. She'd play How Great Thou Art and she would play Amazing Grace. In the five years that she ran that restaurant, only one person got mad and walked out and said, if I wanted to hear church music, I'd have gone to church. Well, la-dee-da. But she said, I can't tell you how many times people would get up wiping tears from their eyes, saying, thank you, I needed this. So she fed the belly as well as the soul. And God blessed her tremendously, and she insisted on being a part of what we're going to try to do in that young man's life. Does he deserve to go to jail? Yes. According to the laws of our land, he deserves to go to jail. But does he deserve mercy and grace from the Lord? Yes. And how much more do any of us need mercy and grace from the Lord? Amen, amen and amen. The season we're living in, it is very easy to get lost in the busyness. You couple that with trying to move and get boxes unpacked and so on forth and so on and trying to put stuff on the walls and find the right place. No, move it over here. No, move it over here. I'm going to need help Tuesday. I need at least two other people that are not afraid to pick up something heavy, and I don't mean me. I'll help you pick up, but I'm not talking about picking me up. Not yet anyways. And move a bed 90 degrees against a different wall. All because she didn't tell me that's the wall she wanted it at. But I love you. She said, are you going to leave the bed like that? And I, I was hoping to. But I have this feeling. And you know what? I was right. That feeling was right. I'm going to move the bed. If I keep talking, I'll wind up moving the bed by myself. So if you're available Tuesday, let me know. Daytime or nighttime, you let me know. We'll get squared away on that when it's over, said, and done. But this, really, this is one of the busiest times. Between Thanksgiving and Christmas, busy, busyness, B-U-S-Y-N-E-S-S, picks up. And as a process of this busyness, we get so busy, sometimes we don't see the needs of other people around about us. It's very clear that if we're not careful, we can become cynical. Amen, oh me. We can become cynical because we don't believe the needs of others are that pertinent or that important. Or we believe that they've got the ability and we're just adding to their coffers. It's very easy to see somebody on the side of the road and make a judgment that that person really isn't that hungry and they don't have that need. Don't look at me like that. Amen. We've seen it. We've, we've driven by, we've angrily in some cases driven by, how dare you? Because we've heard the stories of people who make thousands and thousands of dollars holding up a piece of cardboard with, I need help. Somebody's in the hospital, got a brand new baby at home sick, blah, 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 whatever the case. And we become cynical that everybody is cheating. Perhaps we're so selfish and we don't care about anybody else but ourselves. I don't think that's true about this church. I believe this church is not selfish. Somebody say amen anytime. Don't let me down now. Amen. 
We are not selfish. We're not afraid to bless others, even if we know there's the possibility that we might be taken. The fact of the matter is it's on them, and they'll answer to God for it one day if they do indeed attempt to try to take away from us knowing better. And because the Bible says Jesus was moved with compassion, those words gripped me. I mean, got a hold of me. He was moved with compassion. He stopped to make a difference in this leper's life. And I just want to ask you this question. What is it that motivates you? I kind of, you know, casually and, and jokingly referred to motivation earlier on. But the fact of the matter is there are things that motivate us, things that move us, things that cause us to try to be involved, to do something, to be involved in somebody else's life, to help others that are going through a hard time. What is it that motivates you? What is it that motivates me? What is it that really moves us to do? See, when you're really motivated, you'll do something that will make a difference. My wife and I had gone out to eat after church one Sunday night. We used to love to go to Godfather's Pizza. We'd slap about a half a roll of quarters in the jukebox and play Beach Boys with our pastor and his wife and their children. And sometimes there would be as much as 12, 15. I think one night we had a little over 20 one night. And we would go in there. And so... We would have the time, we'd eat the pizza and, and enjoy a great time. But on this occasion in Anchorage, Alaska, we had gone to the local pizza hut. We'd gone in and ate and enjoyed some fellowship. Didn't try to feed the machine. They didn't have Beach Boys. Some days. But as I stepped out, a man met me and said, Sir, can you please help me? We're hungry. I said, I don't have any money to give you, but I said, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll go in there and I'll order you a pizza right now, and I'll get you drinks. He said, well, the manager won't let us come in. By the time the manager comes to the door, he said, get out of here. I said, we're leaving. He said, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to them. He said, these are bums. All they do is harass people all day. I said, well, they have asked for something to eat. They're not getting anything to eat. I said, you're telling me you're going to refuse to feed them? I said, I was about to come in there and pay for it. But I said, if that doesn't happen, i tell you what's going to happen. I'm never coming back here again. I'm never coming back to your establishment again. I will absolutely hold you and all other pizza huts responsible for your actions tonight. The couple that was with us, I had pastored before in Tennessee. He was in the army and they had moved him to Alaska. I got, well, I'll tell you what, you better be careful. God will put me in your path again if you're not careful. And said, sir, don't waste your time. I said, I'm not wasting my time. I'm coming in. I'm not giving him any money. I'm not stupid. I know what he'll do with the money. But I said, he's going to eat that pizza. And I said, if I have to, I'll sit in this parking lot and make sure. He won't sell it to somebody else for $5 so he can go buy him whatever. He said, well, I'm not, I'm not going to take you money. I said, I'm telling you, you don't think this is going to cause a... I said, I'll step back in your establishment and cry out, this man refuses to feed hungry people who their food is bought and paid for. What pizza do you want? I said, you want one with everything? He says, no. He said, olives give me gas. And I said, well, we don't want that. I said, how about a standard issue pepperoni? He said, that's fine. I said, give him the largest pepperoni you got and two great big old glasses. What are you drinking? He said, Coke is fine. I said, Coca-Cola it is. I went back in there, pulled my card out. The man is still arguing. I've never known a businessman to argue with a paying customer. I slapped my card out, and I said, are you going to ring this up or not? And I said, just so you know, I said, I'm going to sit out in this parking lot until I see you deliver that pizza. And I'm going to watch them eat it and drink your Coca-Cola. And we did. The couple that was with us, said, Pastor, if you hadn't have done that, I was going to. He said, I've been there. Even when I was in the wrong, I've been there. I was so hungry, and no one would give me anything to drink. And I remember the scripture. I was hungry, and you fed me. 
I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was clo- uh, unclothed and naked, and you clothed me and warmed me. Now, I may not be able to do it for everybody, but everybody that I get an opportunity will, I, I will when that opportunity arises. But that young man was motivated. He was moved with compassion to do something. But why? Because he had been there, done that, and he knew what it felt like to be hungry, and no one would give him an, even a glance sideways. Jesus was moved by the helplessness of this leprosy-laden man. You see, leprosy in biblical times was their COVID-19. wonder what that would read like if we read it now. A virally infected man came to him. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Stick any illness you want to, but this particular situation was leprosy. Leprosy was the thing that you had to keep social distancing in mind. There was no such thing as being able to provide some kind of sanitizer or, or whatever to keep yourself clean. As a matter of fact, if you had it, you were considered an outcast. You were considered unclean. You were considered contagious and therefore contaminated. Speaking of social distancing, depending on which way the wind was blowing, if you saw someone and friend lepers wore the same outfits, you could recognize a leper from a long ways off. If they were at least 100 feet away and the wind was blowing from them towards you, there had to be 300 feet. And they would have to cry out, Unclean! Unclean! Some people would pick up rocks and stones and throw at them to make them go off the road and get away. Other people had no problem giving them a wide berth, making sure that they got as far away as they possibly could. They weren't allowed in public areas. They absolutely had to mark themselves. What if we had to do that with COVID-19? COVID! COVID! I I love the deal they sent me. I got today, at least I read it today. They said, you know, it's amazing. You tell us if we sneeze or cough to do it in our elbow. Then you tell us to go up and elbow bump people. They handed me my food at the drive through just a few weeks ago. They handed it to me on a tray, refusing to have contact with me. I said, well, what are you doing that for? They said, well, it's so that you don't get COVID and I don't get it from you. I said, I don't have it. They said, well, we don't either, but we don't want it. I said, I don't either. I said, so why are you handing my food to me like this? So that no human hand has touched the bag. What about the stuff inside the bag? What about the food that was prepared in the kitchen and then was wrapped up? Did you do it with a machine or did you do it with human hands? They were, uh, uh, uh. I said, when they pulled it through the window and you put it in the bag, was it human hands that put it from the window into the bag? Uh, e, er. I said, how did that bag get on that tray for you to hand it to me? Uh, well, uh, hmm. I said, it seems to me I'm taking the greater risk here. You've touched it so many times I can't even keep up with it. My favorite, though, is when I hand them my, my debit card to get something. Do you want your debit card sanitized? I don't know how to take that. Are we talking about the card or my account? Hello. So this man is in a very jeopardous situation. This leprous man actually had come to a place to feel as though he was contaminated, corrupted, and condemned. But folks, what I'm talking about tonight is not about leprosy. It's not about the disease. It's not even about the miracle of healing. What I'm talking about is this. Jesus was moved with compassion. 
I'm going to tell you what we need to do. We need to come to a place where we remember where we were when the Lord found us. We need to remember how bad off we were. For you see, leprosy is also very much so symbolic of sin. It covers the whole person, not just part of you. If you're thinking bad thoughts, the rest of you falls in line. If you're speaking wrong things, it's bringing the rest of you in place. If your hands are doing wrong things, if your feet are taking you to wrong places, I got news for you. The whole body is affected. And yet Jesus was moved with compassion. You know what Jesus did? He tried to imagine what it was like to be in that fellow's well, the remainder of his sandals. I bet his sandals had done wore out. He was already wearing tattered, ragged, dirty, filthy clothing. And Jesus tried to think for just a minute, what would that be like? He tried to imagine himself. You see, friend, when Jesus took on our sin, he knows, he knows, he knows what our sin is all about. He who knew no sin, who had no guile found in his mouth. He knew and understood. And he looks at this leprous man. And he was moved with compassion. This man came to Jesus in need of only what Jesus could do. And Jesus gave this man two things. Listen to me. Gave him two things that every single one of us in here needs. Are you listening? Number one, we need forgiveness. I don't care who you are. I don't care how long you've lived for the Lord. At some point, you're going to need forgiveness again. And the second thing this man needed was a healing. But a healing that went beyond the physicality of his need. He needed a healing that went down into the spirit Because, friend, let me tell you, the things he had seen, the things he had heard, the things he had experienced, I bet you made that man cynical. I bet you made that man angry. I bet you that leprous man had feelings. And he needed healing far beyond leprosy. The Bible tells us that when Jesus gave him those two things, he gave it to him in two separate ways. Are you ready? Number one. He gave it to him by virtue of the touch of his hand and the answer from his lips. Oh, I'm about to get excited here. Listen, I want to ask you this question. When you came to Jesus, was he your first resort, your last resort, or your only resort? See, some of us receive Jesus early in life. Some of us receive Christ when we're children. I'd like to believe that's a first resort. I like to refer to youth ministry. Y'all will like this, Justin and Marcia. I like to refer to youth ministry as pre-center ministry. I usually wind up with post-center ministry. I, I have to deal with people who've already been through hell and back and got a return ticket. I have to deal with people who absolutely, I'm at the point where I'm trying to deal with folks who have tried everything else that the world's got to offer, but they haven't tried the Lord. And they get to a place either because they're at the end of their rope, they're at the end of their life, they're at the end of their their, their, their way of living, they're at the end. And they have come as a last resort to Jesus. Oh, that I could reach them while they're young. Oh, that I could get them while they're Elijah's age. Oh, that I could get them while they're Mason's age. Oh, that I could get them while they're young enough to train them up in the way that they should go. When people heard this yell, this leper yell, unclean, unclean, they got out of his way. You want to clear a path? I think I'm going to puke. That'll, that'll clear a path every time. Amen. All you have to do is make the sound. I mean, friend, it's like parting the Red Sea. And this man cried out, unclean, friend. There wasn't no trouble getting through the crowd. He got through the crowd. He got to the front of the line. But let me tell you something. Jesus was his only way. And Jesus didn't turn away. Somebody help me here. 
I said Jesus was his only way and Jesus didn't turn away. When this man cried out unclean, Jesus said, I know. The man said, but I'm unclean. He said, not for much longer. The man said, but I'm unclean. He said, I can take care of that. I can handle that. I can deal with that. Somebody help me here. I'm here to tell you I've never found a sin yet that God couldn't handle if somebody bowed their knees and humbled their heart. I haven't found a sin yet in the world that God could not deal with if we were serious about getting right with God. If you're going to play games, I got news for you. Amen. Stop looking at my notes. When Jesus sees this man and his need, he's moved with compassion. Let me ask you a question. When you've got a need, like so many of you said a while ago, how do, how, how do you approach Jesus with your need? How, how do you come to the Lord with your need? This man gives us a simple four-step approach. Are you ready? you're going to make notes, now's a good time to whip that pen out. Number one, the Bible, and you don't need to discard the obvious here. The Bible is clear to us. This man came to Jesus. He didn't come to his apostles or his disciples. He didn't come to somebody that had been healed. He came to Jesus. If I'm going to receive anything from the Lord, I've got to come to the Lord. Oh, it's one thing for me to talk to somebody who's been in touch with the Master, but I need to talk to the Lord. I need to come to the Lord. Somebody say amen. He came himself. He didn't send an emissary. He didn't send somebody on his behalf. He didn't send somebody who who felt sorry for him. He came himself to the Lord. Second thing he did, he implored him. That word implored, we, we don't use that word very much. Let me put it down to a level you can understand. He begged. He begged. He humbled his heart with great humility and he literally begged Jesus for what he could not do for himself. Honey, when you get to the place that you can't do anything for yourself, when you've done everything you thought you could do and it wasn't enough and you just ain't got nothing else, if you don't know what that's like, rejoice. But I'm here to tell you, this old boy has had a few times in his life, I don't know what to do. I get to the place, Lord, you know we got to have this. Lord, you know this has got to happen. Lord, this has got to take place. I I don't know what we're going to do. And God says, got that. Third thing. Bible said he kneeled down before him. He didn't come up there trying to pretend he was, you know, just having a small problem with psoriasis. He didn't hide himself from the Lord. His clothing gave it away. The skin condition gave it away. You could see the flakiness of his skin. You could realize the man was being eaten alive. You could honestly say he was a dead man. Man walking. He may very well have been the very thing that inspired the walking dead. You ever seen that? I'm not much for zombies. They don't do much for me, but what few pictures I have seen, I'm like, hmm, they need Jesus. Hello? If you see a zombie, they need Jesus. Somebody say amen. And this young man... Now, I say young man, he may have been an old man, but he knelt down before the Lord. Couldn't hide his leprosy. So as he knelt before Jesus, he did so humbly and acknowledged, I don't have anything. I've got, I've got nothing. If I've got to buy my way in, I'm broke. I'm flat busted broke. If, if I've got to schmooze my way in, You're not hearing me. I got nothing. It's just me. I got nothing. I'm only empty, Lord. I got nothing. So here I am. I'm on my knees. And I'm begging you. If you are willing... I know you have the right. The law says you have the right. Society says you have the right. 
I got nothing. I am nothing. But if you're willing, you can heal me. Uh, he came to Jesus. He came seeking Jesus. He came honoring Jesus and he came asking Jesus. I'm going to say it again. He came to Jesus. He sought Jesus. He honored Jesus and he asked of Jesus. And when he did, Jesus didn't say, I don't have time for you. I've seen this racket before. I know what you're doing. I'm going to do this for you. You're just going to take what you can get and run off and I'll never see. Oh, help me. It's easy to get cynical. It's, it's easy to get to the place. I speak from personal experience. I learned about scams in prison. And I was a free man. I learned about scams from six and a half years of prison ministry. And the very first year I got away from prison ministry and went to Hawaii, I found out you don't have to be in prison to run a scam. When Jesus saw him, when Jesus heard him, when Jesus sensed him, he was moved with compassion. Not to go, oh, you poor little thing, you. But he was moved with compassion. Listen, to change that man's life. Whew. You know what Jesus did? Two things. Two things. Ready? Number one. Jesus touched him. I don't care if you like Trump or not. I really don't. I don't care whether you voted for him or not. I, I, I just don't care. I, I'm, just, I'm, I'm tired. But I saw something. Not a photo opportunity. The president was at a rally sometime back here. I think it was earlier this year. It may have been late last year. And in the crowd was a vet. A veteran of one of the senseless acts of war that we continuously as human beings go back to again and again and again. And this veteran that was there had no hands and no arms. Having lost them in an explosion of an explosive device that had been set along the side of the road and he did not know. And when it went off, Two of the casualties of his injuries were his arms and his hands. He had just enough of a stub from the shoulder down to where they could attach certain devices to give him, you know, the clawed effect. And when the president came up, the man put out one of those artificial limbs. And though the president took it with his left hand, he reached up and cupped his hand. His face in his hand. And the reporter shared that the man cried. That the president would take that moment to just simply touch him and say thank you. And I'm so sorry you got hurt like this. But thank you. Thank you for serving. The Bible tells me that when Jesus spoke to the man... He touched him. I don't believe he touched his head. I don't believe he touched his shoulder. I don't believe he took him by the hand. I believe he reached up and touched that old flaky, dead, dried skin, infested, infected, viral, infectious man who had leprosy. And that man could not remember the last time he felt somebody touch him. I can only imagine if he had been a child and got leprosy and it happened to children. He never felt another hug. Mom and dad are long gone because they can't stay with him. They can't hang around him. They can't do for him because it's, it's hopeless. If he was a teenager, he never knew what it was. 
to have that cold, clammy, sweaty hand try to take that gal's hand that just seemed to be warmer than, you know, fresh bread out of the oven and nervously hold that hand or sheepishly reach over to try to get some sugar. If he was a young man with wife and children, He never felt their embrace anymore. He never felt what it was like to to know that caress of her hand, of her in his arms, his children being held close to him, kissing him on the cheek, and likewise he to them. Do you see it? Do you understand it? This man's life is gone. It's ruined if you're willing God, if you're willing. And now Jesus, read it. Jesus touched him. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. And oh, joy that floods my soul something happened and now I know he touched me and he made me whole oh I believe if Bill Gaither had lived back then whoo they'd have sung that song like an anthem he touched him right then, right there. And I do, I believe he cupped his face in his hand. And the next thing I know, Jesus doesn't just touch him, which, by the way, the law did not allow. But Jesus speaks to him. I said, Jesus spoke to him. Jesus answered his request, acknowledged his request, answered his prayer, absolutely spoke to him and said, I am willing to be made whole. Hallelujah to God. When he did that, thank God he didn't get a pre-recorded announcement. Thank you for calling Jesus Ministries. Jesus cares about you. And he would answer you right now, but he's busy handling other people seeking his time. If you would like to receive a call back, leave your forwarding number and Jesus will call you back. I got this the other day. Jesus will call you back in between 44 and 56 minutes. Se habla español porque es dos. Or something like that. All my, all my Spanish friends watching on, online, they're, they're dying laughing like that crazy preacher don't even know what he said. He didn't hear, I'm sorry, Bubba, but you're unworthy. You've got leprosy. I can't. I can't do it. You've got leprosy. I can't get near you. I, you know how some folks are. Well, bless God, the Bible says, I, I've got to be able to stay away. I, I've got to separate myself and not touch the unclean thing. I, I've got to stay sanctified. I got, oh, give me a break. Jesus hung out with hookers. Jesus hung out with tax collectors. Jesus hung out with sinners. Jesus hung out with leprous people. I'll be good. Just pray. Listen, this man didn't just get a response from Jesus. He got a response he could only dream about. I'm closing. Let me just ask you, what do you need? Have you you got a need? 
I mean, gen- genuinely, if, if, you had, if you knew right now that the Lord was going to receive you and hear what you have need of, would you say something? Would you step forward? Would you, would you get out of your seat of comfort? They, they are comfortable, right? That much f- foam under your backside ought to be quite comfortable. And if it's not, we'll see what we can do about getting you a more comfy seat. I will promise you this, we're not going to get recliners. And I had a member who had one at the church, but he was disabled. I, I, you remember that? Got to Oklahoma. I thought, what in the world? And I said, is this for a play that the church is doing? This, this recliner? Oh, no, no. That's for Brother Moore. And I'm thinking in my head, well, who does he think he is? And then when I met him, and his body is stiff and rigid because of a stroke, it's the only way he can come to church. And I asked the question, can we buy him a better recliner? Do you have a need? Is there something that you need to bring to Jesus? Do you believe that Jesus is willing for even you? I do. I do. Listen to what Jesus said. Jesus said, if you can believe, all things are possible to those who believe. I submit to you, we've got a problem with our believer. Our believer's broke. The antenna's come loose. The, the, the connection has come undone. If we can believe, all things are possible. We can come to him, Lord, if you're willing. Lord, if you're willing, you can help me. Lord, if you're willing, you can heal me. Lord, if you're willing, you can give me peace. You can give me hope. You can get me out of this mess. So you see, if you've got a need, Jesus has got what it takes to meet that need. You'll pardon me, but he's better than Santa Claus. And some people keep trying to treat him like Santa Claus. Listen, here you go. Come to Jesus. Don't come to the priest. Don't come to the preacher. Don't come to the evangelist. Don't come to the faith healer. Oh, I hate that. Don't get me started there. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Second thing you do, you got to ask of Him. Beg if you must, but ask Him. Don't ask an angel. Don't ask a saint. Oh, help me. Y'all, not, y'all better start praying. I feel a mean streak. You need to ask Jesus. I said you need to ask Jesus. You don't need to ask the Pope. You don't need to ask the general overseer. You don't need to ask the, the, the Maharaja or whatever. You need to ask Jesus. Beg if you must, but ask him. Third thing you got to do is you got to humble yourself. We could stand a good dose of humility in this nation. Yes, I'd like for America to be great again, but I'd like for her to be great at being humble. And last of all, speak to the Lord. Don't come demand. You you have no right to demand a blessed thing. I have no, I've been pastoring forty uh, one excuse me forty two years, forty three years. I I've been at it so long I forgot how long I've been at it. Forty three years, because I include those six and a half years at the prison ministry. I was a free man. I want to make sure I, I get that point across. I was not an inmate. Came close once, but that was only because. Somebody was trying to impress somebody else with my incarceration. Ask me after church. I ain't talking about it online here. Amen. You can't come up and demand it. None of us. None of us. I don't care how long you've lived for God. I don't care all the things you've done for the Lord. None of us can demand a thing. We can only come and petition the Lord. Father, in Christ's name, touch us, help us.
We may not have leprosy like this man did. We may very well just simply be somebody, God, Lord, that's got a need. But that need has worked on us in such a way that we absolutely feel unclean in your presence. We feel unclean, Lord. Because of what we've dealt with. We've dealt with it for so long. We've lived in pain for so long. We've lived in discomfort for so long. We've just gotten used to it. But God, I'm asking you, would you touch tonight in the name of Jesus Christ? Touch tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. And help us to come to you today. Help us, oh God, Lord, to implore you, to kneel before you, God, Lord, to humbly ask you, if you're willing, you can help me. You can help me. Because something really happened. And now I know he touched me and he made Has he touched you? Oh, he touched me. And all the joy that floods my soul. Because something really happened. And now I know. Yes, he made me whole. Right where you're sitting. Do you have a need? He can touch you right where you're at. He can touch you right where you're at in the midst of your need. He can touch you through whatever you're dealing with, whatever you're suffering with. He can touch you. Will you let him? Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, touch us, I pray. Please, Lord, I pray, touch us. If you're willing, you can help us. If you're willing, Lord, you can give us a way where there seems to be no way. Show us a way where there seems to be no way. Father God, Lord, if you're willing, you can provide, God, what is needed. Whether it's healing, whether it's forgiveness, whether it's deliverance. Father God, Lord, the need can be met through finances that show up, God, Lord, unexpectedly. God, you're able to do exceeding abundantly above all that which we can think or ask through the power of God that works within us as you receive the glory. Because if we can believe, all things are possible to those who believe. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, he touched me. Yes, he touched me, and all oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something happened, and now I know he touched me, and he made. What happened to that man? The Bible said as soon as he spoke the word, the leprosy was gone and he was healed. All he got to do is speak the word. Isn't that great? All he has to do is speak the word. In the name of Jesus this week, take the opportunity that God gives you and it's going to come. Some of you in far greater means than others, but the opportunity is going to come to share with somebody what you heard tonight not because I preached it but because it's the word of God and God's given you the ammo you need to fire that gun so go ahead and take that 10 point buck out hallelujah with Mark chapter 1 verse 40 
41 and 42. He's willing if you are. Somebody say amen. Amen. If you're able to help me on Tuesday, whether in the daytime or in the evening, if you could let me know, I'd appreciate it. I really would. You don't know how much I appreciate it. I'll, I'll buy you a burger. I'll buy you chicken, whatever it takes. Amen. Or I'll avoid buying those things for you if you don't like them. But if you can help us, we'd appreciate it. All minds clear? Murky? We're good? Let's, Father, in the name of Jesus, keep your hand upon us. Keep us safe, God, I pray. Help us to stay, Father God, faithful to you and be rapture ready, God, Lord, because of the blood of Jesus Christ applied to our souls. Father, until we meet again at the appointed hour, I just trust you, God, that you're going to be served well by all of us, God. And Father God, we, Lord, will be blessed by you. We give you the praise in Christ's name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Shake it a hand, hug it a neck, or don't do that at all. Amen.